Are you curious about your baby's sleep? Newborn, baby, or toddler? Well, you're in the right spot because I want to share with you a very short science lesson about your child's sleep to help you be a better troubleshooter. Hey there, everyone. I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm the creator of the Helping Baby Sleep Method. I'm a chiropractor by training, but really found my passion empowering parents like you to teach their little ones to sleep and parent confidently day and night as a sleep consultant. So here we go. Let's talk about the sleep science. How does it all work? Don't kids just fall asleep naturally? Yes and no, because here's the thing. The drive to sleep is physiological. All of our bodies want to sleep. We need sleep. It helps our immune system. When we're in deep sleep is when our growth hormones are being released, which helps our bones and muscles grow. While we're sleeping, our brain is detoxing itself and purging toxins, and our immune system is fighting off foreign invaders. We literally can't live without sleep. So shouldn't it just happen naturally? Well, yes, it does. However, the way we sleep is actually learned. And for a lot of people that can seem really weird, but it's true. And the sooner you know this, the better, because it helps explain so many of our little people's habits. If you have to lie beside your toddler to get them to fall asleep at night, they're probably looking for you to do the same thing in the middle of the night when they wake up like all humans do in the night. But sleep really is a learned habit because not all humans require someone to lie with them, reinsert a pacifier, or rock them back to sleep in the night when they wake up. So how does this all work? Well, while the drive to sleep, it's, it's there, it's physiological, the way we sleep is a learned habit. And for most of us, we inadvertently teach our children to fall asleep in ways that could become unsustainable. And remember, I'm biased. I work with people who are challenged with sleep and come to me after days to weeks to months of interrupted nighttime sleep. My own story was that I used to nurse my son to sleep and it was a beautiful, natural thing and I loved it until it felt unsustainable for me. When he kept waking up every couple of hours to nurse back to sleep, I realized I had to change his associations with sleep so that he could learn how to relax himself to sleep at bedtime and then put himself back to sleep in the night when he woke up, which all humans do. Drive to sleep biological, way we sleep is a learned habit. And inadvertently, I had taught him in the newborn stage, what sleep looked like. There is a short window somewhere around five weeks of age till about 11 to 12 weeks where we can very gently imprint fabulous sleep habits, putting kids down calm but awake. That's what we teach in our book, The Helping Baby Sleep Method, versus drowsy but awake, which I feel sets a lot of people up to fail. If you're making your child drowsy in your arms when you start putting them down and transferring them as they get older and more aware of their surroundings, they reject that transfer. You end up having to do it over and over again. So by practicing calm but awake in the first few months of life, you teach your child the onset of sleep happens in the bassinet or crib, the space that they're going to be sleeping long term. Okay, drive to sleep is biological. The way we sleep really is a learned habit. And what are the systems that govern that? Well, the first one, is what a lot of people know about, your circadian rhythm. Sun comes up, light hits your eye, tells your brain it's time to be awake. Sun goes down, that allows the release of melatonin, which is a chemical that signals a cascade in your brain to tell your body it's time to be sleeping. Melatonin itself does not make you drowsy. It instigates that cascade to get started. Interestingly enough, babies get melatonin from their mother's breast milk. They don't start to produce their own melatonin until around 10 to 12 weeks of age, uh, as per the research shows. Of note as well, the research shows that a child's circadian rhythm doesn't fully develop until they're six months of age. We often see a, a big leap in benefit around four months, and then six months is the time when it's fully mature. And that's also the time that we start to see a very common napping pattern from child to child. Naps vary significantly child to child and in the fourth month, the fifth month, the third month, really until that time when they're on three naps. So that's your first system, your circadian rhythm. The second system is your homeostatic system, sleep pressure. So as your body's metabolizing, burning through fuel to help fuel your body's systems, you break down a molecule called ATP, and that allows the buildup of a protein called adenosine. Adenosine builds up and bing, it signals your brain when it's time to sleep. In adults, caffeine blocks that sleep pressure. And in all humans, exercise helps that sleep pressure, which is why getting your child out for his visual simulation when they're babies or physical exercise when they're older will help them sleep. And then the third system, the scientists don't talk about this one as much, but the psychologists would, and it's called your emotional cognitive system. So if your brain is distracted by anything, a thought, 
a sound, a texture, a feeling, it can be harder to fall asleep and then stay asleep. And you might see this with a wet diaper or being too cold in a room or too hot or being hungry or, um, you know, any visual distractions. That's why we use blackout curtains to minimize visual distractions. Think about yourself. When you were pregnant, you probably had a little bit of pregnancy insomnia because you're busy thinking about all the life changes that are coming to you. Or maybe before your wedding, you had those same thoughts or you're taking an exciting vacation or you have a stressful job presentation. Adults have little bouts of insomnia frequently. And in kids, we call these sleep regressions. So every time you hear sleep regression, think growth and distraction. My child is growing neurologically or physically by getting teeth, and that's just distracting them from relaxing down into sleep. It doesn't mean that they can't sleep. It does mean that it might take a little bit more time or be a little bit more interrupted. So those are the three systems that govern your sleep. Circadian rhythm, sleep pressure or homeostatic system, and your emotional cognitive system. If you're struggling with sleep, I have laid out a step-by-step -step approach for you from the newborn stage to 24 months to help you navigate sleep science, sleep behavior, and what goes on in your head when you're working on your child's sleep. It's called the Helping Baby to Sleep Method, the art and science of teaching your baby to sleep. It's available on Amazon or Audible, but you can get started by taking our simple six question sleep quiz below in the link in the comments. Thanks for being here and don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss another baby sleep and parenting tip.